blessing the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is your friend in the School of Prayer and Deliverance, Daniel Lulukoya. You are most warmly welcome to this Eagle Hour. A program for those who have rugged determination to fulfill their destiny. A program for those who are willing to learn the secrets of greatness and success. God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the victory won on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for the mightiness of the name of the Lord. We give you all the glory in the name of Jesus. Father, lay your hands upon us today. Father, open our understanding today. Father, do wonderful things in our lives today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are looking at what I call finding your way in the market square of life. Finding your way in the market square of life. All of us are in the market square of life. Some know what they want. Many do not know what they want. There are many confused persons in this market square. The devil will bring you so many things to distract and confuse you in this market square of life. A lot of people have lost their way in the market square of life. What are the keys for success in the market square of life? Number one locate your divine position locate your divine position you are here to fulfill a divine agenda you are on a mission to accomplish divine intention you were created for a purpose it is your responsibility to discover your responsibility on the surface of the earth find out as early as possible your placement in life and it's a great value that God has attached to you he has planted something in you to display to the world search for it find it and display it every man who does not know where God has fitted him will definitely lose focus and once you lose focus you collect the salary advance of backwardness and frustration the earlier you discover your divine place, the earlier your destiny grows. Knowledge of your placement in life determines your progress. In Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 4 to 5, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Knowledge of your placement in life determines your progress. It is important for you to pray that God should show you your appointed place in life. It is important for you to pray that God should show you your appointed place in life. God showed Abraham that he was to raise the nation. Joseph was to preserve life. Moses was to be a deliverer. Joshua was to lead to the promised land. Paul was to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. Find out what God has called you to do. Focus on that assignment. Give it all you have and then your journey for attainment will be short. You need to pray, O oh Lord, show me the secrets of my life. O oh Lord, show me my divine location. O oh Lord, process my life into fulfillment. O oh Lord, make your way plain before my face. O oh Lord, if I'm wrongly scheduled, Lord, reassign me. It is time to stop living a borrowed life. It is time to disallow the enemy from fashioning your life to where they want. The first thing 
to stop you from roaming about the market square of life is to locate your divine assignment. In that market square of life, there is a dangerous demon there called Focus Killer. You must not allow that demon to afflict you. Number two, wage war against the spirits of diversion. The spirits of diversion. Wage war against the spirit of diversion. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way we seem it right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When you lose your bearing, you end up in the gutter of life. When the enemy diverts your attention, it will definitely destroy you. When you shift away from the calling of God for your life, you experience serious problems in the journey of life. Diversion will upset your destiny and end in frustration. I pray that every satanic diversion of your destiny shall die in the name of Jesus. Diversion will lead you to the wilderness of regret. The enemy rings multiple bells to get our attention. He shows us glittering things to divert your attention. The enemy paints the road in gold in order to make you follow the path of destruction. You cannot fly like eagle when your employer is a talking. The enemy diverts your attention and leads the diverted person to the city of unfulfilled destiny. The devil is an expert at making immediate alternative provisions. He engages your attention on counterfeit goals in order to mislead your life. One minute of absence from a divinely designated post can cause a damage that cannot be repaired in a lifetime. I say that again. One minute of absence from your divinely designated post can result in damage that cannot be repaired in a lifetime. The enemy has a lot of broadcasters around. You must learn to control what you hear. You must learn to control what you hear. What you hear determines what you feel. And what you feel decides what you fear. And what you fear determines how far you go in life. I say that again. What you hear determines what you feel. And what you feel determines what you fear. And what you fear determines how far you go in life. Whatever you know will not increase your faith. Screen it out of your life. Reject it and ignore it. Once the enemy has pushed you out of trap, then your destiny is trapped. Key number three. Let wrong attitudes and habits die. Bad attitudes must go. Bad habits must go. Whatsoever will not glorify God and move you forward. Stab the thing and remove it out of your life. Hebrews 12:1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this sin. The Lord knows that there is. And let every one that name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If a man therefore point himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. If you must be the person God wants you to be, your tongue must be bridled and sanctified. If you are an advertiser of leaking tongue, you will not make it at all. The power of God will not dwell mightily in you if you are talkative. If you must be a giant in the field of destiny success, you must be a person of few words. Few words. If you must be an oracle of God, speak only when the Holy Ghost says speak. Lying is an attitude that pulls down success. All liars will never attain excellence. Ask yourself, when last did I tell a lie? When last did I gossip or backbite? The tongue 
is the signpost of the man's life. Heavens take note of every idle word. If you tell lies, you end up in the dustbin of soul. If your life is taken over by sin, you will dig your own pit and bury yourself there. Do you want to overcome in the market square of life? Find out the sin that so easily besets you and remove it from your life. You don't know what your weaknesses are. They are in trouble. They are in serious trouble. If you don't know what your weaknesses are, you must find out what your weaknesses are and correct them. The sin that you pet and pamper, the sin that you crave for, are strategies designed to destroy your destiny. Learn to identify your weaknesses, beloved, and deal with them. Your weakness could be indiscipline, impatience, headstrong, easily angered, easily anxious, easily worried, too sensitive, doubtful, inconsistent, unsympathetic, resentful, fearful, insecure, insincerity, greed, bitterness, self-pity, aimlessness, disorderliness, forgetfulness, unpredictableness, very hard to please, proud, argumentative, intolerant, dominant, unforgiving, non-challenged, talkative, revengeful, compromising, stubborn, suspicious, suspicious, restlessness, laziness, crafty, loud, or depression. Find out your weaknesses and deal with them. Four, let your problems become your promotion. Every man is entitled to an enemy. Opposition prepares you for miracles. Only the dead has no enemy. If you have no enemy, you better apply for one. Because the enemy will reveal the state of your heart. The enemy will reveal the weakness of your spirit. The enemy will reveal the wickedness of your soul. Whether we like it or not, we only go through challenges. We grow only through challenges. We grow through problems. A pastor, maybe you need an elder who is always attacking you. A student, maybe you need a teacher who does not want to see you in class, or who does not appreciate what you are doing. A teacher, maybe you need a student who is always challenging you in class. You need those oppositions who will make you kneel down and pray. Problems help to identify our weak areas. Problems help to fortify our wall of defense. Problems help to solidify our strategies of attack. Problems help to build our internal character. Problems help us to be humble. Problems help us to depend completely on God. Problems sweeten our lives. Problems will make us better or bitter. Problems are an opportunity for God to manifest his ability. Problems are an opportunity to display the almightiness of the Lord. Problems are a way of producing a sense of dependence on God. Problems are a way of promoting our spiritual maturity. Problems are a way of proving our integrity. Problems are a way of providing us with greater opportunities. Problems are a way of preparing our hearts for ministry. Problems present opportunities to promote us to higher hearts. Problems sometimes the way God gets our attention. Problems expose the worst or best of our attitudes. Many of us do not know that God utilizes the enemy. God sometimes uses our enemies to get our attention. Satan may think he's working out his own agenda, but he and his foes accomplish God's purpose in spite of their lies and rebellion. Human beings may define problems as situations that are working against our comfort, circumstances that are working against our comfort, situations that are putting joy or very joy. However, God's definition of problem is zero from our own. A problem to God is an opportunity to glorify His name and prove His power.
an opportunity to work close. Let your problem become your promotion. Let your problem become your promotion. Number five, key in the market score of life is perseverance. Perseverance. What does it mean to, to persist? To persist is to be stubbornly repetitious. It's to be insistent. It's to hold firm and steadfastly to a purpose despite obstacles, warnings, or setback. It's to refuse to stop. It's to persevere, to be fixed and unmoved. Brian Bartimaeus is a classic example of persistence overcoming resistance. Persistence is the root of progress. Persistence is to insist on your goal. Nothing in life can take the place of persistence. There are so many talented men and women who are failures. Lack of persistence has dragged many to the valley of defeat. Somebody entered into the university many years ago with stolen documents, stolen examination documents. He went from spent four years in university from year one to year four. All of a sudden, a panel was set up to look into student certificates, and he knew that he got it with fake documents. So he didn't wait for the panel to discover him. He fled from the university at the age of 32. He went back to the secondary school, the lower school, to sit for PC exam again at that age. And eventually entered it correctly and graduated. We must persist. There are seven enemies of persistence. One is lack of purpose. You cannot be persistent without a purpose. Without a goal from God, you cannot press on when the hard times come. A man will work eight hours for pay. A man will work 10 hours for a good boss. But he will work 24 hours a day only for a good cause second enemy of persistence is excuses excuses look for exit signs 99 percent of failures come from people who make excuses moses made almost 11 excuses jeremiah made excuses the lord did not accept their excuses number three enemy of persistence is dodging responsibilities adam blamed Eve and God. Sarah blamed Agar. So blame the slow priest for going to do sacrifices that he was not supposed to do. Persistent people take responsibilities. Four, lack of stamina. Inability to stick on a course of action for some time. Five is laziness. Six is lack of determination, and seven is listening to failures. Persistence does not recognize any limitation. Persistence treats life's problem as onions. You remove them layer by layer. Persistence mixed with determination is equal to success. Number six way to know your way in the market score of life is to seek and receive divine information seek and receive divine information power is to have access into the mystery of the kingdom you must have access into the mystery of the word of god mystery is the undisclosed treasure that is hidden the wisdom of god too is hidden therefore you must ask god to grant you access into the into the mysteries of life job 29 from verse 4 as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed myself with butter, 
and the rock poured out rivers of oil. When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and they get dressed and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace and their tongue clipped to the roof of their mouth. He says, when the mysteries of God is upon my tabernacle. You need access into the mysteries of life. You need access into the mysteries of the world. You need access to the mystery of the kingdom. Business has secrets. Marriage has secrets. Every profession has secrets. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him. There is an information you need from God. And when a man taps every information, his destiny explodes. Your life is completely overhauled when you contact divine information. Your life is completely overhauled when you contact divine information. Divine information brings reformation, transformation and promotion. It sets the space for distinction. If you are always struggling in your career, business, finance, family, academics, something has not been revealed to you. Something you need to know has not been revealed. God's hidden wisdom is the answer to every problem. Once you make contact with heavenly hidden wisdom, you become an extraordinary person. Success has secrets. Business has secrets. Marriage has secrets. The secret you need is with God. Not everybody has discovered this hidden beneficial secret. In conclusion, on that green hill outside the city wall, many roads converged. Strange and unexpected people met at Golgotha. Beloved, at the cross of Jesus Christ gathered a strange assortment of people. Each group has its own agenda and its own reasons for being there. Each group had a different attitude to the man on the cross. Just like Jesus in the temple, most of them did not know the significance of what was happening before them. The soldiers were there, they were on official duties. Pharisees were there because they hated him. The Sadducees and the priests, they brought him there. The traitor who sold him was there. The thieves who died with him were there. The disciples were there. The mockers were there. The centurion was there. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there. Joseph of Arimathea was there. The crowd who cried crucify him, they were largely indifferent, but they were there. Simon of Cyrene was there. Those who provided the vinegar, they were there. Mary Magdalene was there. Almost 14 groups of people gathered at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Each group had their different attitude to the man on the cross. Likewise, in the market square of life gathered an assorted group of people. Some know what they are doing, some don't know what they are doing, some see things passing by and they don't know how to handle it. May you not be a spectator in the market of life. May you have the anointing and the power to do what God wants you to do. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In case you are listening to me and you are not born again, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. But see what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you like Jesus. Come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you said that short prayer with me, I congratulate you. Thank you for surrendering your life to Jesus in this program. The Lord will continue to uphold you and follow all our instructions. God bless you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for your children who have joined this program. As they pray these prayers, give them uncommon breakthroughs. Give them uncommon testimonies. To you, Father, be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining this session of Eagle Hour. God bless you in the name of Jesus. See you again next time.
Let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Seven glorious hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 I believe that you've been blessed by this insightful teaching brought to you by our host, Dr. D.K. Onukoya. Join us same time next week for another episode of the Eagle Hour. But as you count the days, get any of these books to edify your spirit man and tap into more secrets. 77 common mistakes singles make. Battle against wasters. Capture your destiny. Dealing with destiny thieves. Visit www.mfminkbookshop.com to get a book now. Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Surely the Lord is here. Thank you, brethren, for being part of this glorious program. We believe that God has done marvelous and wonderful things in your life. If you would like to share the testimonies of what the Lord has done for you, kindly send to us through the information displayed on the screen. God bless you as you do so.